Welcome everybody to this DaVinci Resolve quick tip. Today I'm going to show you the best export settings for YouTube. Let's go! Here we are in DaVinci Resolve with our project open. As you can see I have this clip here which has been color graded. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but sometimes your colors can look washed out after exporting. This mostly happens on Mac, but I guess that on PC the same thing can happen. This phenomenon is called a gamma shift. Every video you export has tags embedded. Now QuickTime, the program that on a Mac handles all your media in the background, interprets tags a bit differently than the Winchu Resolve. Now, the newest version of DaVinci Resolve has some features to cope with that. Down here, under the advanced settings, there is the option to export a custom color space and gamma tag. You can see, under the advanced settings, in your export window, you can set a color space and gamma tag. DaVinci also introduced a whole new color space which is called Rec709A. This is meant to cope with said phenomenon. Today though, I want to propose a whole new way which is even better and has a lot of advantages aside from that. Now as you can see the node tree is quite extensive. I don't want to go into that anymore, but I'm gonna go to my timeline, select this, right click and go to bypass color management. And as you can see, this grade is all of a sudden very bleak. Of course it's one hell of a lot better than what came out of camera but it just does not compare to what we had before. Now let's turn that back off and I'm going to show you what this feature color management actually means. For that we go into the project settings. Under color management, as you can see for my color signs, I have not selected the standard DaVinci YRGB, but the DaVinci YRGB color managed. Now, that gives us the option to choose a working color space. A working color space is what we use to actually create the image and after that it's transformed for the output color space sRGB since we're going for YouTube. DaVinci does that all by itself. So you want to select the DaVinci wide gamut from here. This is actually one of the largest color spaces to exist right now. So it's very well suited for what we want to do. Output color space, as mentioned, is sRGB, and that is about it. Hit save. Your formerly log and flat footage will now be converted to sRGB. But we don't lose any options in working with that because we're actually not working in sRGB but in the Vinci Wide gamut. And what I've noticed, which isn't really talked about a lot, is that after an export, you won't experience the gamma shift, which is so nice and perfect for us. Now let's go into the YouTube export settings. I have actually set up a preset here, YouTube Color. Give it a file name, I'm gonna call it Horizon. I'm gonna to export to QuickTime H264. Of course, tick hardware acceleration and go for your desired resolution. I'm going to choose UHD and the frame rate of 23.976. Now for quality, one of the most important settings. You do not want it on automatic. YouTube recommends a bitrate of 45,000 kilobits per second. That's as much as on a Blu-ray disc. So if you watch a film on a Blu-ray disc, it's at 45,000 kilobit per second, maybe even a bit lower. YouTube will compress your video no matter the bitrate. It could be way lower than that and they will still compress, so you've got to give them a high bitrate so your quality doesn't suffer too much. Set your encoding profile to high and your entropy mode to CARBAC. If you want, you could tick on multi-pass encode. I have had problems with that in the past. My renders fail sometimes, so I don't use it personally. It will make your video look better and it will take a bit longer. Keyframes you want to leave on automatic, you want to tick frame reordering, pixel aspect ratio, of course, square, data levels to full and 
if you use the aforementioned method, you can leave your color space and gamma tags on the same as project. Now you want to bypass re-encode when possible. You do not want to use optimized media, proxy media or render cached images. They will make the quality worse. You want to force sizing and debayer to highest quality. Flat pass is only for if you want to export it without a color grade. Now you simply want to add to render queue and hit render all. It's gonna chew through that. So if you follow this tutorial, your quality will be phenomenal, your colors will look right, everything is gonna be fine. That was the tutorial guys. Now you know how you can preserve quality and color accuracy throughout your exports. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe Maggie, leave a like. I'm especially fond of comments. And until the next time, thank you.